in FLL, winners are the teams that have the best robot that they use the best. Now, a lot of teams focus too much on just making the robot as good as possible, but not actually operating the robot the way they want it to. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to practice for the competition, both the robot and the presentations. Before we practice, we need to know who the technicians will be, where they will go, where the robot equipment goes, and where the home area mission models go. Now we already need to know what we're going to do with the robot before the match starts. So, the technicians need to practice setting up the robot for the inspection and distributing all the mission model that's in the home areas and the robot equipment and setting up the robot to start the first run. Once we move on to practicing running the robot, actually do not need to run the programs. We need to practice the transitions between the programs. Keep in mind that the robot itself does not need to practice running the runs. If you programmed it well, it should already know what to do. So, to actually practice the transitions, start by putting the robot where it ends the previous run. So, if you're practicing the first run to the second run transition, put the robot in a similar position to what it would be at the end of the first run, then practice that transition from the end of that first run to starting the second run. Now, your team should start slowly, focus on getting everything correct, and then speeding up. As I say, if you can't do it slowly, you can't do it quickly. It is possible your team has to drop some runs. Once your team is pretty practiced with the runs, then turn on the robot, run the runs, but don't stop the runs if they don't work according to how they're supposed to. Keep going and finish the match because it is highly likely that your team's runs do not actually work completely when the competition happens. Now let's talk about judging. Before we start practicing the innovation project presentation and the robot design judging, make sure that both presentations are five minutes long. When your team is good for time, find one to three adults to act as mock judges. It is important that these adults do not already know what your team's project is and your team's robot because in the competition, the judges will not know anything about your team's innovation project or robot. Practice the both presentations in front of the adults and have the adults look at the rubric and score the presentations accordingly and have them ask questions that they will think of having watched the presentation. The goals in both presentations are to communicate clearly their innovation projects and the robot design process, and they need to clearly communicate how they score on each of the rubric without saying, you know, exactly how they score on each of the rubric. Then, the judges or the mock judges will give you feedback. And to improve, focus on where your team can actually communicate better or where the mock judges did not clearly understand something. Also, if there was any gaps in the rubric, your team should change the presentation to fill in this gap. And finally, if there's more time, feel free to practice with the same or another set of judges again. Don't forget that winning is not only about making the best presentation and robot, it's also about who performs with their robot and presentation the best. And don't forget, your team can learn what to improve on the robot and the presentations by practicing as well. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching. Please do feel free to subscribe to the channel. We just passed 400, so thank you all for that. Leave a comment down below like the video, share it with your friends, and check me out on Fiverr as well. Thank you, and bye.